Hi, this is Gary, and you're watching a tutorial of how swaps work. In this segment, we're going to cover an overview of an interest rate swap, and then we're going to take a look at uh, some issues uh, surrounding that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, shrink this down here. Now, uh, the first question you might at be asked is, uh, why would uh, party enter into an interest rate swap? And that's a good question. Well, um, we'll start off with interest rates. Now, let's say uh, for this example, I'm going to use municipality ABC uh, to try to make things simple. We'll just call them Muni ABC. Uh, they're going to issue a floating rate bond uh, for 20 years at uh, 6%. And we'll say for X dollars, I mean, it could be 100 million, 10 million, something like that. If you'll remember, bond prices are inversely related to interest rates. That means if bond prices rise, interest rates fall, and if bond prices fall, interest rates rise. They're inversely related. So what that means is if municipality ABC uh, wants to issue a bond, they're going to prefer to have uh, the lower a lower possible interest rate, all things being equal. That way they can get a uh, higher bond price or get more cash flow coming to them. Now I have an interest rate, uh, like a yield curve, and I have highlighted today uh, with the X right there. And I'm going to put that there. And then we have three years later, uh, which I'm going to put a bunch of question marks in red. Now, the current rate I have is at 6%, and this is in our hypothetical example here. Now, let's say three years later, or 10 years later, or, you know, 20 years later, uh, Muni ABC wants to get more financing. Well, they don't know what interest rates are going to do. I mean, they could do three things. Uh, just three years from now, they can do three different things. They could either go down, go up, or stay the same. So, uh, one scenario I have is interest rates are going down. Well, that's good for municipal bond issuers because that lowers the future cost of borrowing. Uh, they can get better financing uh, provided they're up to investment grade and stuff. Now, uh, the other scenario is the red line, which I've drawn here, where interest rates go up. And that is bad for municipal bond issuers because it means... Uh, it's going to be higher future borrowing costs or it might not be advantageous to enter the borrowing market when they need financing. So it's going to cost them more money to, to get financing. Now, we don't know which way interest rates are going to go. Interest rates could go up, they could go down. Now, in a rising interest rate environment where interest rates are going up, uh, a fixed rate payer or a swap is going to save money because they don't have to worry about that red line, which I've just taken away there. Uh, but the flip side is, they're going to have to pay on the swap because they can't take advantage of the green line. So basically, in a falling interest rate environment, uh, the fixed rate payer is going to lose money. So let's do an overview of uh, what a swap looks like. Now here we have a uh, Muni ABC and they are they've issued a bond to uh, bond investors and they're making floating payments we'll say uh, LIBOR plus one percent so let's say the LIBOR is at five percent in our example we'll have six percent now these bond investors could be anything uh, they're generally pension funds some investment banks foreign investors uh, hedge funds or other type of uh, speculators that hold the bonds and then, uh, to the right in green, we have, uh, I'm going to call it Fee Bank. Now, Fee Bank is uh, actually helped uh, Muni ABC issue a floating rate bond to investors, and they earn a fee for their services because they have the expertise in the banking area, and Muni ABC does not. They're a municipality. Um, they're not in the business of, you know, issuing bonds or doing financial stuff. So, if we go back to our interest rate uh, chart, which I had before, we have the black line where we're at right now, and then Municorp is concerned about the red line where interest rates go up. They're basically worried about, you know, rising interest rates. 
So, Municorp uh, decides to uh, hire advisor EFG to analyze their prices, uh, interest rates, and uh, fees to determine uh, if uh, any potential swap contracts are fair. So EFG advisors, and it's just a picture here. And after doing some analysis, they decide that uh, FeeBank has the best uh, product offering, uh, fee adjusted, and can help Muni ABC uh, get into a swap. So EFG recommends FeeBank, and Muni says, okay, we'll do that. So FeeBank offers to set up a swap. Uh, to cap the interest rates for ABC, so instead of rising in the red, uh, they're capped in the orangish color there. They can't go any higher than that. And uh, what we have is a bunch of different payments being made by MuniCorp and I'll go, or Muni ABC, and I'll be going over that in just a second here. So they're going to set up a swap. I've got the arrow set up here. FeeBank sets up a swap where uh, Muni ABC pays uh, FeeBank a 6% at 20 years and uh, FeeBank in turn pays 70% of the LIBOR for 20 years. Now the LIBOR is the London Interbank Offer Rate. So now Muni Corp is, or Muni ABC is protected from interest rates rising because they just have to pay the, the fixed rate to fee bank and if the rates go up well fee bank's going to cover that cost uh, as i've highlighted in yellow there they're going to pay 70 percent of the libor uh for 20 years in our example and the good news for fee bank is they earn another fee in basis points uh 0 0.01 uh would be like one basis point i don't know uh fees could range anywhere from three four basis points up to like 12 13 20 basis point depends on the situation and how complex it is so uh, and again it's it's also based on the size of the deal so sometimes we have a uh, little bit of a conflict of interest where fee bank uh, might be geared toward uh, all things being equal going for the financial product to meet Municorp ABC's based on uh, the size of the deal uh, a bigger deal or uh, a larger present value, as we'll see later, uh, equals higher fees uh, for fee bank. Uh, that's also the case if we went back to advisor EFG earlier, where if they recommend a longer deal or a bigger deal, they might get paid a percentage of the size of the deal. So there's a little bit of a conflict of interest there, or a little bit of a conflict, we'll say, because uh, Muni ABC probably has, is the least knowledgeable party here. But um, going back to the deal here, either party may exit the deal if they pay the present value of the future cash flows of the bond. Uh, is usually a term that's written in the contract because sometimes you want to exit out of that without getting into another deal. So uh, if you want to think of the present value of the future cash flows of the bond, uh, think in terms of if you own a mortgage on a house. Uh, you're paying interest. You're paying. You're paying a payment of uh, mortgage plus interest. Now, if you want to pay that mortgage off, you'd pay whatever the present value is uh, plus some other fees and stuff. So it'd be it'd be similar to that. Um, so let's say the bond was a uh, hundred million dollars. Uh, maybe the present value uh, might be, I don't know, 50, 60, 70 million, uh, depending on how, you know, the length of the bond. Typically, the longer the bond, uh, the higher the present value. And then the shorter the length of the bond, the lower the present value of the future cash flows. Now, uh, there's two types of swaps we're going to look at here. Uh, the first is competitive. The uh, second is negotiated. Now, the advantages of a competitive swap is where you go out and get bids, and you typically, you, Muni ABC, if they were to go out and get bids, they get the, the highest bid. Uh, and they also have an advantage where they're paying fee bank a lower fee because fee bank's not doing as much work, uh, so they can't charge as high of a fee, which brings us to the downside of a negotiated uh, swap, and that is that fee bank has uh, getting a higher fee for that so that's not good for me and the ABC they got to pay a higher higher fee and uh, for doing a deal uh, why well there's complex features that make it uh, like embedded options and stuff like that that make it uh, difficult to market to investors 
and the banks have to you know figure out uh, how to time the sales to get the, the best price and stuff so they're taking a lot of that risk there and hence the higher fee I'm going to go ahead and shrink this down here well, let's take a look at some of the issues of the swap uh, the first is that the uh, contract uh, issue and that's uh, what if one party becomes insolvent or bankrupt now if that issue is written into the contract sometimes sometimes it's not uh, that can be a, a thorny issue if one of the parties becomes insolvent another issue we have uh, with the bonds is or the swaps is that uh, it's an opaque market and what that means is it's difficult to know if you're getting a clean bid or if you're getting the best bid on that negotiated uh, swap uh, the next point is that uh, bond sales are regulated by the SEC. SEC uh, swap deals are not, which means they don't have to be reported, or it's it's harder to know what's going on uh, in in that area. And another issue which I briefly covered is the information gap, and that basically means which party is the most knowledgeable. If you look at our swap below, you've got bond investors, Muni ABC, and Fee Bank. My guess is that most of the time, uh, Muni Corp or Muni ABC would be the least knowledgeable party there. Now they could try to bridge the gap by hiring an advisor, which they'll do in most cases or pretty much all cases, but there's still a gap and you know they're going to do what their advisor tells them but they're going to be the least knowledgeable party there now you can actually flip the situation around with let's say we take out muni abc and we replace them with uh, like a, a hedge fund that's done a lot of homework and stuff and they've really researched something and they have they have expert opinion in an area where now fee bank and the bond investors are the ones that are uh, the least knowledgeable party so I mean it depends on the situation but typically with a uh, with a swap with Muni ABC they're going to be the least knowledgeable party uh, obviously they go ahead and hire advisors but still there's some risk there now the next point is talking about advisors is that advisors get paid uh, by the size of the deal and they're going to typically uh, prefer to do larger ones if it's possible and there's not any compliance violations so let's say uh, any ABC wants to enter into a deal they might they're typically if all else is equal would recommend a longer deal and that increases the present value of the deal and that increases the fee they get now another issue with <coughs> swaps is that they're very difficult to value exactly what's going on because you have to make a lot of different adjustments for embedded options and so forth and you've got different uh, Different, a lot of different stuff that's going on and things that can change and it, it basically makes it difficult to value and the uh, last piece or last issue is uh, criticisms over contract length and uh, fees now if you remember uh, we've got advisors or one party uh, EFG they're getting paid by the size of the deal uh, so all else being equal they're gonna prefer a larger one and then we also have fee bank which is trying to generate fees so they can make their profit target for the quarter uh, and so forth so they're also going to prefer a larger deal now they're not going to do a really really horrible deal but they'll they'll all else being equal they'll, they'll push toward the larger larger fee if they can and that wraps up our issues and it also wraps up our tutorial thank you for watching